Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Hosanna Christian Fellowship's Friday night message. My name is Irene Bromley, and I have the pleasure of sharing with you guys tonight. I'm going to be sharing a message on times of suffering, especially in today's world, and how you can make the most out of your circumstances and have faith in God to work all things out for the good. Now, before I dive in, this is an online-only study, and I am typically never in front of a camera, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself in case you don't know me. The most important thing that you need to know about me is that I am a Christian, I am a follower of God, I have been walking with God, and I've grown up in the church all my life. I am also married to the most amazing man in the whole world. I have been married for a whole nine and a half months. I know it's impressive. Don't worry, I won't be teaching on marriage today. I am 22 years old. I've been going to Hosanna since I was about 16, and I've been serving in various ministries here for about five years. The type of ministries I'm usually in are very behind the scenes. I'm usually in sound, I'm running the camera, doing lights, doing media, those kinds of things. So being the one up here with the tape on my face and the microphone, super weird for me, way outside my comfort zone. So excuse me if my voice is a little bit shaky, I'm a bit nervous being up here. Um, I've most recently started to get involved in women's ministry more. And I've been on staff here at Hosanna, actually, for almost four years as assistant to Pastor Nathan Hamry, who teaches here on Wednesday nights. I am currently actively pursuing a call that God has placed on my life to serve in ministry full-time here, here at Hosanna, wherever God leads me, especially stepping into leadership roles, such as in women's ministry and, women's ministry and in the tech team. So that's enough about me for now. I'll tell you more later. My title for today's message is The Good from the Bad and the Ugly. I'm going to be teaching from the Christian Standard Bible, the CSB. And for those of you taking notes, I'll mostly be in John 16, and Romans 8, 28, as it says right there on your screen. So let's pray, and then we'll dive right in. Heavenly Father, um, I pray that you would calm my nerves first and foremost so that I can just uh, speak the words that you have given me. I pray for all who are going to be hearing my message uh, right now and for the years to come. I pray that you would speak to them through me. I pray that they would have an open heart and open ears to what you want them to hear today. And I pray that we would um, just learn about how we can grow our faith in you and just know that you're gonna work things out for your good will. And um, I pray that you would just bless this study, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So opening up in John 16:33. It says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world, but be courageous. I have conquered the world. So I wanted to focus specifically on this verse today because I believe that for many of us, right here, right now, today, may be a time of suffering. It may be a very hard time where you lack peace, where you lack faith, and for a whole bunch of different reasons. I mean, we're living in super weird and difficult times right now, we have fears of sicknesses and illnesses that maybe we've never had before and that we wish we didn't have. We are anxious for the future of our country considering the upcoming elections. Maybe we're dealing with unemployment or maybe we're just busier than ever. I mean, that contrast happened with my husband and I when COVID hit, he lost his job and I got super busy here with all of the online ministries because that's what my job is here. So we experienced that super weird contrast of the various effects of the times that we're living in and it was hard and there were good things too, but just strange times. Um, maybe you've lost sight of your identity because your identity was wrapped up in your job rather than in Christ. Maybe you're starting at a new job you've never done before and you just feel inadequate. A lot of us, myself included, miss our family members that we can't visit. I was supposed to be visiting my grandmother this month uh, who lives in Northern California and we were going to be doing like a big birthday thing for her. She's in her 90s now. Um, and instead for her own safety, we are doing one of those like video hellos and people who live close are gonna be doing one of those like drive by happy birthdays. So I'm just doing this, hi grandma, we love you video. And it's just, it's not the same as getting to, to hold my grandma and to learn from her in person. And ladies specifically, and all single parents, maybe you've lost a piece of who you are because your kids are now home all the time and you no longer have as much time on your own to relax and to med meditate on God's word like you used to. Maybe your relationship with your spouse or your family is tense because you simply just don't have time apart. 
And most of all, I think we miss our local fellowship gatherings and our church services. I miss our ladies' luncheons and our book studies through Titus 2, and I really took those for granted, and I miss them so much. But I'm thankful that Hosanna's been open, so at least I can see everybody again. Or maybe life is great for you right now. Maybe you're not having a hard time at all. You're not anxious for anything, and you're sick of these studies about how hard life is because they just don't apply to you. And if that's the case... I just want you to take everything I'm about to say and just stick it in your back pocket so you can pull it out and use it later when you need it. But for today, I'm going to approach this message with an assumption that this might be a hard time for you or that you want to prepare for future difficult times and grow your faith. So, today you might feel confused about why God is allowing the current circumstances, but in spite of these current circumstances, The Bible does speak that we will endure times of suffering, as I just read, but we are also told that God will work all things together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose in Romans 8, 28. Now, I am a firm believer that the past faithfulness of God demands our present trust in him. I'm gonna say that one more time. The past faithfulness of God how he's already worked in our lives and proven himself and in the lives of those who came before us. That past faithfulness of God demands that we trust him now with our current circumstances and with everything that's in the future for us. So before I dig into all the good things that can happen from these current times and how you ought to approach your future, I would like to refer to the past faithfulness of God that we see both inside and outside of scripture. So just to name a few within scripture, because there's thousands of them, and we simply don't have time for that. Right off the bat, Genesis chapter one, God takes an empty and a formless world, and from that, he creates ordered life. He breathes his very existence into us. From the loneliness of incompatibility that Adam experienced, you know, he was surrounded by all of these different animals, and it says that he just, he didn't match with any of them. He, He was alone. So from that, God took Adam and he created his wife, Eve. So from this state of loneliness, God created this system of support and an image of Christ's love for the church and how we ought to honor God. He created marriage from that. And what a beautiful thing that is. From the obedience of one woman, Esther, who was ripped from her home and everything that she knew, the Jews were saved from certain death. From a long line of sinners, including murderers, prostitutes, liars, drunks, and sometimes just downright faithless people, God was able to deliver Jesus Christ into our world. And from the most heartbreaking death in all of history, the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are given a new covenant of eternal salvation. From the time Apostle Paul spent in prison, We're able to learn about worshiping God in the midst of some of the greatest sufferings, even suffering because of our faith, which is a specific type of suffering we are definitely promised. And also from that, we receive a large portion of our New Testament that encourages us now and in the years to come. And lastly, in the future, we will see the destruction of the world and of a population in Revelation. But from that, God brings forth a new earth that is free from suffering and free from sin. So we see in scripture, God is able to use our far less than perfect selves and our definitely less than ideal circumstances to bring forth his goodwill and work all things together for our good. Today, I'm also going to use only two extra biblical examples of God working things out for the good. The first one is the speculated time frame when the first parts of the Torah were possibly written. And the second is my own testimony. Now for that first one, This cannot be known for sure, but it is believed that Genesis was likely written during the years 1446 and 1406 BC, which is the estimated time of Israelites, the Israelites 40 years of wandering in the desert. Now, when I first heard that, it struck me as really cool. So here we have the Israelites that are experiencing the direct consequences of their sin, their lack of faith and obedience in God Almighty, who had already proven himself in the past and saved them from so much. They are wandering the desert aimlessly, waiting for an entire generation to die off so that they can enter the promised land. And God looks at that and goes, yeah, I can use that situation. 
That was just the coolest thing to me. So behold, in the midst of that time, we received the first book of the Torah and likely much of the rest of the Torah. We are given the law, the old covenant, which though inadequate for eternal salvation, as Pastor Nathan has been teaching on Wednesday nights in his study through Hebrews, this old covenant was the perfect setup for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And it showed us how much we need him and his sacrifice. And then without those things, we wander through this life as aimlessly as the Israelites wandered through the desert. Indeed, God can use anything, even the less than ideal circumstances that we bring on from our own disobedience. The second instance of God working all things together for good, one that is sure and irrefutable, is my own testimony. Now, sharing your testimony is extremely important. Uh, Most of my education has been in Christian schools. And my senior year of high school, I took an apologetics class where we learned how to defend our faith and how to have really amazing and genuine conversations with people who practiced other religions and people who were simply just not believers in a God of any kind. And in that class, while learning some of the best defenses for Christianity you can learn, I was told, and I believe with all of my heart, that the, the most sure and irrefutable um, example of, of God, proof of God, is sharing your own testimony because it is God's work in your life. You are living proof of who God is, his nature, and what he can do. However, knowing that, I have been hesitant to share my own testimony like this very publicly because I was scared of the doors it would open. I was scared of my past being the only thing people saw when they looked at me. I'm sure you guys can relate to that. I wanted to be seen for my own accomplishments and what happened because of me, not what happened to me. I wanted, um, I wanted God to work all things out for the good, but I also wished I could just move on from my past and like never talk about it again, <laughs> uh, whether it's good or bad. But how silly of me and how selfish of me, really, that I would want people to look at me and see anything less than an amazing and miraculous work of God. That I would want people to look at me and know me, not for God's strengths shown through me, but for my strengths so that my weaknesses could be ignored. And shame on me. So today... I show my weaknesses very publicly (laughs) so that God's strengths can shine bright in my life and I can be used as an example that God works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So as I mentioned earlier, I grew up in the church and I took my faith seriously my entire childhood. I truly made my faith my own and I sought to know God and to live out his will in my life. But as I mentioned earlier, struggles in this life are promised to us. Those words I read earlier in John 16, 33, do you know the context of those words? It was Jesus talking to his disciples. The people who spread Christianity and learned directly from the mouth of Jesus Christ were promised suffering. Even Jesus himself endured hardship long before the cross and obviously on the cross. So of course, you and I will experience hard times. One of my personal, most difficult trials was experiencing abuse as a little girl. I was molested by a family member for nearly three years from ages seven to nine. Part of that time being while I actually lived with the family member and the abuse was quite regular. The abuse did end when that family member moved away, but the effects didn't necessarily disappear when he did. I eventually told my parents what had been happening around age nine or 10. We went through all the proper channels. I gave my court testimony several times to police officers and social workers and anyone who needed it. And my poor parents prepared to face my perpetrator in court. We wanted to make sure that this never happened to anyone else as far as we could control. But as God would have it, I learned later in life that my perpetrator became very physically ill. He denied treatment. He got just well enough to be taken to the airport so that he could go to court and face what he could, had done, but he died. And just like that, he was gone. After some time, my pa- um, after some time passed, my parents were thankful that God took him into his own hands and, um, and our family didn't have to go through the court system and the justice system. It was over. I know my parents and older brother struggled for a long time with this, 
They struggled with guilt and anger. Everyone, including myself, felt responsible, even though we weren't. And I, was, I wasn't the only one who later had to seek counseling. But boy, was a weight lifted off my shoulders. I was going to be able to move through life and act like it had never happened. I mean, that's how we wish it worked sometimes, right? But we have to allow God to work in and through our sufferings and give him a chance to work everything out for the good. Except I never really worked through what happened to me and I put walls around my heart. I struggled with bitterness. I had anger problems. I felt I had every right to be bitter and to harbor a grudge. But that was hurting me, not the dead men who abused me. So I sought counseling for the first time at age 14. And I worked through my anger so that my past couldn't rule me anymore. For the first time, my closest friends knew what I had been going through. And they stood by me and they gave me their support. So see, by opening up, people got the opportunity to do what God wanted them to do. To fulfill their calling within Christ to be encouragers. By opening up, other people were able to help me, and um, my testimony ministered to my friends, and they ministered to me too. And now I was a bit freer, but I was in this really weird place where I would be willing, for sure, to help others through what I went through if they like came to me first, um, and also if we like happened to have the same story. And I guess I would share what God can do if they happen to be dealing with the exact same thing I went through. But saying my testimony into the air and letting people decide to just throw it away if they want to, that was never gonna happen. That is until my junior year of high school. I went to a Christian school, like I mentioned earlier. I had an assignment in my uh, Bible class my senior year that frankly I despised. <laughs> that required me to share my testimony um, up in front of the class. Um, Every single person had to, each, a different person was picked every class period. Uh, so naturally, um, my name wasn't called till like the end of the semester. So I waited for it all year long and dreaded it the entire time. And every time he'd reach into the jar to pull out someone's name, I was like, oh, like I just wanted to get it over with, but also I didn't want to do it. And eventually my name was picked toward the end of the year. And I wasn't going to lie. So I got up there and I opened up about abuse to more people I had ever opened up to before. Um, and people were simply shocked. That's the normal reaction I get when I usually share this. People who knew me as a child and who know me now just never really see it coming. Um, a lot of people, especially people who aren't walking with God, uh, have a hard time wrapping their head around the fact that I've been through something like that and that I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, they don't understand why I would still love God and want to walk according to his purpose. And that always just strikes me as odd. People see my suffering or they see suffering in others and they see it as a reason to not believe in God or at least certainly not a loving one like the one seen in the Bible. I see this a lot with women in particular. We have this empathy for others where we see others hurting and suffering and injustices and it almost feels like it's happening to us. Um, we cry with others and we feel it with them. But what does scripture say? Scripture says that God is the creator of Genesis who made man and knows his struggles intimately and even struggled himself when he came down to earth as the incarnate son of God. Um, but for some reason, people think so highly of themselves that their own personal experiences or even the experiences of others that they could not possibly fully understand dictate whether God is good or not. They see me, a God follower, suffering, and assume that my God is fake, but they ignore that what I experienced was a direct result of sin's mark on the world and the sin of a man who had free will. Suffering was not in the blueprints for creation. Man created that by straying from God's will. Eve took a bite of something she was not supposed to, and now we feel the effects. And I too would have suffered much more from my experiences if I had not chosen to press into what God had for me and to open up about my experiences to other people. I needed to open up to God using me for his goodwill. Now I don't fit into the usual statistics that my, I later learned in a uh, school psychology. Um, I just, I don't fit the statistics of a typical abused child. 
And that's because God is in control and he has worked all things out for the good. I'm able to stand here today and speak openly about difficult experiences because God is a God of healing and a God of restoration and a God of transformation. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In all times, especially times of suffering, cling to God. Worry about nothing and press into your relationship with God through prayer. By clinging to my faith as a child and now, he has given me a peace that is beyond understanding, that has guarded my heart and mind despite the circumstances that life brought me. And that peace has allowed me to open up to others about my suffering, and my experiences have continually allowed me to relate to others in ways I just simply wouldn't have been able to if I didn't just allow God to work through me and use my past. It surprises me every day how God places specific people in my life that have been through what I've been through. I've been able to see walking miracles of God where he has worked things out for good in ways that I can't even understand. Because of my past and the miracle I have seen God perform in my own life, I have an unshakable faith and I can help others and minister that to them in ways that I otherwise just simply couldn't. And I get to be a part of their faith in God growing even stronger. What a blessing. My life is proof of what God has done and what he can do. And not just in my life, but in yours too. But as much as I've seen people thrive in spite of terrible circumstances, I've also met people who've been through a lot and they're not doing so well. The difference I see in these people is that they aren't relying on God. Even other women I've met that have gone through what I've been through and are now walking with God, or those who used to walk with him that no longer do so, I usually see in them that they first clinged to anything but God in the midst of their hardship. For those walking with God now, they have found healing and they have some of the strongest walks of faith that I have ever seen. But the women who aren't and the men who aren't, well, they didn't believe that God was a loving God that could use even the darkest parts of their life for his glory. And they're missing out on the blessings that God has in store for them. And Christians aren't the only ones who suffer. Those in the world experience suffering just like us, but they go, go through it without God. They go through it alone. And sometimes believers are tempted to do the same, I've noticed. To suffer alone, to never reach out, to act like the suffering never happened. That's something I struggled with and to prevent God from working in and through every single part of their lives. So hopefully by now, I've at least been able to show you that God is capable of working all things for good if you allow him to. And you might be thinking, yeah, that's great. I have faith God can work all things out for good. Everything will, will work out someday. But what about right now? What do I do while I'm suffering? What do I do in these hard times? Or maybe those that I mentioned earlier that are doing just fine, you're just wondering how you can prepare for future hard times. The answer is simple. Cling to God now and press into what he has for you. Matthew 6, says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. I encourage you to seek to live righteously, to live in honor of Jesus' sacrifice, and to let God take control of your needs and to give him your worries. Psalm 59, 16 says, But I will sing of your strength and will joyfully proclaim your faithful love in the morning, for you have been a stronghold for me, a refuge in my day of trouble. In prayer and in worship, proclaim God's faithfulness. Have faith that he will be your stronghold in times of trouble. Practice that. And lastly, in 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 through 19, we receive the key, I believe. Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't stifle the spirit. Right now in the midst of suffering and in preparation for future suffering, you can do a few things. You can rejoice always and give thanks in everything. There's always something to be thankful for and to praise God for. And if you're having a hard time finding something to rejoice over, the fact that you have a loving God on your side who wants to bless you and work all things out for your good is reason enough to sing his praises. 
You can also pray constantly. Talk to God, the one person who knows you and your struggles better than anybody else. He understands how you feel and wants to help you through difficult times and take the weight off your shoulders. Let him. You can also remain in Christ. Stay in his word. Don't remove yourself, the vine, from the branch. Don't just cut yourself off from your life source. By being in his word, you will be shown what to pray for, and you'll read other countless examples of God working things out for the good to those who love him. I barely scratched the surface. Read the Bible and fall more in love with God every single day. It won't be hard. (laughs) And lastly, don't stifle the spirit. You need to allow yourself to be used by God for his good will. The truth is, you will suffer. Everybody does. It's something we're promised. The trials come whether you cling to God or you're far from him. So at least have God to cling to and trust him. God is going to keep writing his story and accomplishing his will. Whether you're wandering aimlessly in the desert while suffering the consequences of your own disobedience and lack of faith, or he's going to use your life and work all things together for your good as you pursue an intentional life of walking in him and his will. So I encourage you today to live intentionally while in the midst of suffering and to trust God to do what God does best and work all things together for your good. God bless you.